In today's video, I show you some tips and tricks and potential pitfalls when assessing ganglion cysts in the wrist. Typically, ganglion cysts occur at very specific locations. And sometimes you find ganglion cysts at other locations, but they are not that important. So let me show you what I mean by this. If we scroll through this coronal stack here, you want to look for very bright structures. And immediately there are a few things popping into our view here, here, and if you go more dorsally, also this region looks strange. Now let's start off here in this region. This is a very common pitfall that people make. This, especially this one here, is not a ganglion cyst. This is the pisotriquitral recess. You can easily identify this on your axials. Here we have the pisiform and the triquitrum, and this is the pisotriquitral joint. If you go proximal, here you have this fluid collection here. This is the pisotriquitral recess. They can get quite large, and sometimes over one centimeter, so don't call this a ganglion cyst. That's a common pitfall. Another pitfall is the prestuloid recess. It's not large or enlarged in this case, but sometimes you have the meniscus homolog here, and then you have the steloidal attachment of the TFC, and sometimes this prestuloidal res recess is fluid filled, and you should also not call this a ganglion cyst. So, recess here and a potential recess down here. Now, what about this structure here? First of all, that would be a very uncommon site for a ganglion cyst, so initially when I saw this I was thinking, hmm, that's strange, so let's have a look at the other sequences. It's distally to the pisotriquitral joint. Here we have the pisotriquitral joint. Now let's go distally, and you can see it was this structure here, and immediately you can see that this is part of a vein running through here and it's probably something like a venous sling or a varix that's more pronounced here and that might resemble a ganglion cyst. So that's again also not a ganglion cyst. Another very common site where you have ganglion cysts or ganglion cyst-like structures is radiovolarly, especially here in this corner on the volar side of the wrist joint just volarly to the radial steloid process here. They can get quite large and are sometimes really uh, loculated and they are almost never symptomatic. And there are even some authors that say that this is actually part of a recess of the wrist. If you see ganglion cysts down here, don't overcall them. I typically describe them as ganglion cysts and in the description and then at the same time I say that they are clinically not relevant, especially if the referring physician is not a hand surgeon. The most important location to look for ganglion cysts are the dorsal ganglion cysts in this region here. Typically they are either dorsally on the SL ligament, scaphalunate ligament, so we have the scaphalunate ligament here, and you can easily find them at this location. So this is a dorsal ganglion cyst here. So we have a dorsal ganglion cyst here just next to the dorsal SL ligament. Another common site or structure that you can use to identify these ganglion cysts is the dorsal intercarpal ligament which is running here horizontally over the wrist. Sometimes these ganglion cysts are located in this area. This one is not far off. We have these ganglion cysts between the dorsal radiocarpal ligament, which is this striated structure here, and the dorsal intercarpal ligament. Let me show you this on the sagittals here. This is the scaphoid. The dorsal intercarpal ligament starts off here and is running horizontally, it's this black structure over the wrist and inserts onto the triquitrum here. At the same time we have the dorsal radiocarpal ligament which is running here obliquely over the wrist, over the lunate, more or less uh, into the same attachment site here on the triquitrum. If you have a fracture here it's basically an avulsion fracture of one 
or both of these ligaments. So this interval is another site where you want to look for these ganglion cysts here. Also on your axials you can easily identify the dorsal intercarpal ligament, it's this black structure here, and you want to check for any bright cystic lesions around this ligament, similar to this one. So in this case it's more related to the SL ligament and not so much to the dorsal intercarpal ligament. But nevertheless, these are like your landmark structures that you can use to find these ganglion cysts. Now let me show you why even small, tiny dorsal ganglion cysts might be symptomatic at the level of the dorsal SL ligament portion or also uh, along the dorsal intercarpal ligament. Here we can see a wrist of a patient that has other problems, as you can see. But anyways, here is the gap between the scaphoid and the lunate. And we have this ganglion cyst at this region, sometimes a bit more far distally, but it's more or less in this region. So actually what we have here is the dorsal joint capsule of the wrist, and it is innervated by a branch of the posterior interosseous nerve. Basically, it's uh, the posterior interosseous nerve is a branch of the radial nerve, which departs at the level of the elbow, and then divides into two other branches, supporting the superficial and deep extensor muscles. And there is one terminal branch of the superficial branch that innervates the dorsal joint capsule and it's running more or less in this region. And this also explains now if we have small ganglion cysts here and we don't have much space at the dorsal side of the wrist anyways, that you have a compression of this nerve here and this radiates pain to the dorsal joint capsule and the patient has this pain here at this level. Now let's recap what we learned in this video. First, don't mistake any recesses that are physiological structures for ganglion cysts. It's not necessary and if you know the anatomy you can prevent this. Also, be aware that the radio of ganglion cysts are very frequent and clinically basically not relevant. Be very sensitive to even small dorsal ganglion cysts because they compress the terminal branch of the posterior interosseous nerve. I really hope you learned something new today in this video. If so, please comment below or if you have any questions regarding this topic or any other topic, please comment below and let me know. Also, if you want to have a specific topic covered by me, make sure you um, comment below and I try to, uh, to answer any of your comments or questions you have. Oh, and also hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it.